Right. Yeah, you laugh louder because you don't want to hear the truth. At the end of the I've looked at, can you please point Betty, to me listen, where it is? Betty, I'm not allowed to speak in the church. We are allowed to speak here. It's not nice. Let me hold on to it. What's this going to say? That's racist. Just show me. That's honestly a racist. Muslim, she, 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 she held it and she goes, Muslims keep taking it. They do, they do. Muslims keep taking it. That's a racist. You're talking to me about women's rights. Hatred is in your heart. We're not blaming you. That's a racist. You're supposed to love your enemies. That is a racist. You're supposed to love your enemies. Sorry, I'm not going to continue. What kind of love is that? Because why? Why? I've told you the words. It's here. Okay, it's there. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. If you let me hold it, I can, t I can hold it. I'm not going to steal it. There's so many cameras on me. I'm not going to steal it. Come on, man. Steal it. Betty, you've got to read the hate to me. Just love your enemies. Love love your enemies. You. You what you kind of love is that? What, what kind of love is that? You expose Quran when you love people. <laughs> Why would we steal no, a Quran when we can get for free? Many love people. Why would we steal no, a Quran when we can get for free? Many people have stolen the Quran. You're acting like that. You're not going to steal the Quran. I'm not saying you do. You're acting like it's a diamond. Like, it's better than a diamond, Hamid. It's better than a diamond, but you get my point. Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me recite the Arabic for you. Oh, it says I'm not interested in Arabic. Well, how do you Arabic? Arabic. And this is, and this is, Speak in English. Listen, and listen, 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 The first thing to tell you is you have to deal with the primary sources. I like to tell, ask my students a question in their very first New Testament entry class. I show them something that looks like this. I say, what is this? They raise their hand very eagerly and say, oh, that's the Bible. I say, wrong. Let's try again. What is this? Silence. Somebody tentatively raises their hand and says, um, well, it looks like it's an English translation of the Bible. I said, right. And guess what? Every translation is already an interpretation. Every translation is already an interpretation. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, Something gets lost in translation, right? Well, that's all the more true when you're dealing with an ancient language like Koine Greek. And it is crucial to understand the context in which Jesus operated. You cannot understand the Bible just by reading an English translation of it very well. And especially if you're trying to do the Sherlock Holmes thing and get back to the real nub of who the historical Jesus was. You just can't get there from here with nothing but an English Bible in your hand. You need to know context as well as text. Chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 13, 1 and 32. What does it say? It says, it says in chapter, let me just tell what it says in that verse. In that verse. supposed to leave any bruises not supposed to hurt them and here I'm not sure what Sammy uh, you, you do have things you do have Muslim commentators who, who say things like that so this verse uses the form what that form means to limit and not 
exceed the bounds of normality. That's why Ibn Abbas, he said like to tap like this. It was controlling a social phenomenon. But if we look to the Muslim sources, we see something very different. Sahih Muslim, number 2127, Aisha sneaks out of the house to see what Muhammad's doing. Uh, Muhammad comes home, uh, finds her out of breath, asks her what she's done, and then what happened? He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. Wait a minute, I, this is Aisha saying what Muhammad did. He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. I thought Sammy said it's not supposed to cause pain. So was Muhammad violating his own commands in Surah uh, 434? As mentioned by Sayyidah Aisha, radiallahu anha, who said that the Prophet that the Prophet never hit a woman, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as for the point about the Prophet Muhammad, he struck Aisha. I know that hadith he's talking about, but that's actually a wrong translation. If you read the Arabic, it doesn't say he struck her, it's actually he uh, rubbed her chest. And he did that to another man in a similar incident. He wasn't uh, striking her or hitting her, and that's the Arabic as well. Yes, there was some pain, but that wasn't the intention to cause pain. And again, the Prophet did it to another man, the same exact act. It's not an act of uh, hitting someone or violence. And again, the Arabic doesn't say struck. Oh, I can't wait to get to the Bible. We're going to have to wait a little bit, though. Okay? Exodus 21, 20 through 21 gives instruction on how to beat your slaves. If a man beats his male or female slave with a rod and the slave dies as a direct result, he must be punished, but he is not to be punished if the slave gets up after a day or two, since the slave is his property. You can thrash them within inches of their lives, but make sure you don't directly kill them. Look at that! Look at that! That's not a religion I want! You know what? I'm gonna tell you what. Not a religion I want! Not a religion I want! 